Today we're in John chapter 19. We're going to look at verses 25 through 30. Let's begin reading together here in John chapter 19 at verse 25. And I'll read to verse 30 and we'll get into our study today. John chapter 19 beginning at verse 25. John writes, Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Madeline. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour that disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there. They filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on hyssop, and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had finished the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Well, what we'll need to do is we'll take into consideration the context. And as much as we've been doing a series called Snapshots Through the Gospel of John, uh, we've arrived now at chapter 19. But obviously the events that we're seeing here in verses 25 through 30 and the events that we left off on in John chapter 18, well, they don't, in terms of chronologically, they, there are a lot of things that are going on in between those events. So I'm going to um, give a little bit of context to this. We know that Jesus has been betrayed. We know that Jesus has been tried before the, before the Jewish high council called the Sanhedrin. We know that he has stood before the Roman governor, a man by the name of Pontius Pilate. And while Jesus was there standing before Pontius Pilate, Pontius Pilate had asked him a question. He had asked him, are you the king of the Jews? You see that in John chapter 18. And so what I want to do is I want to review a couple of things in John 18 before we move into John chapter 19. So you might want to look over at John 18 verse 33 for a moment because John, uh, because John writes that Pontius Pilate was asking a question of Jesus there. Are you the king of the Jews? And, and the reason he asked that question is to determine if Jesus is a political king or if he's a messianic or a, a Jewish king. And so to establish the context, I need to take you to that passage because in verse 33, when he says, are you the king of the Jews? Notice verse 34. Jesus answered him, are you speaking for yourself about this or did others tell you this concerning me? Pilate answered, am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king then? Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born and for this cause I've come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Now notice verse 38. Pilate said to him, what is truth? What is truth? Now, as we look at this, Jesus had asked him a question. When he had asked, when Pilate in verse 33 had said, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, Are you speaking for yourself about this or did someone inform you concerning me? In other words, is this the result of your own curiosity or have you been fed information? Well, Pilate makes it very clear in verse 35 that this isn't an issue that he's interested in. He is basically saying, I'm governor and I'm not a priest. What does that matter to me? And so as he's asking concerning the kingdom, Jesus in verse 36 answers and says, my kingdom is not of this world. In other words, if I were an earthly king, my first priority would, would be to have a military defending me. Obviously, my kingdom follows different rules than earthly kingdoms. And, and that's what, uh, what Paul would say to us in Romans 14 when he said in verse 17, The kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So my kingdom, Jesus was saying, follows different rules than earthly kingdoms. That's why Pilate in verse 37 says to him, Are you a king then? And Jesus' response, You say rightly that I am a king. But he goes on to say, For this cause I was born and I came into this world to bear witness of the truth. And then he says in verse 37, Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. 
In other words, my followers are those who know truth and seek truth. It's like what he said in, in John 10, 27, when he said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. They follow me. They hear my voice. They know what truth is. I know them. We have a relationship, and they follow me. So Pilate's question in verse 38 is where I want to camp out for just a moment, because Pilate asks the question, What is truth? What is truth? I've heard many philosophies, he could be saying. I've heard many philosophies over a lifetime of government service. So what is truth or your version of it? In other words, what is truth and does truth actually matter? Even Christians seem to be confused about whether there's such a thing as truth that actually does exist. For many people, including believers... Truth is not something you know. Truth is something you feel. And I've had conversations, and so have you, and perhaps you might have once thought like this, or perhaps you even still think like this, where people would say, well, that's your truth, and I have my truth. And what my truth is, basically, is what I feel good about believing, regardless of whether it's something you can substantiate empirically or not. It's what I feel good about. In other words, it's simply my feelings about what I think is true, what I feel is true. And, and so when Pontius Pilate is asking the question, what is truth, that's a timeless kind of question. It's a question that doesn't just apply to you uh, 2,000 years ago. It's, it's a question that, that pulpits today have to answer. It's a question that we today have to answer for ourselves. What is truth? Does it matter? And how do I ascertain what is true? Because the United States has a tendency of thinking that truth is more of a feeling. And even the church is promoting that today. In many pulpits around the United States, truth is what you feel. Now, I was reading something in the newspaper as well as seeing it in a news broadcast. Perhaps some of you saw it just this week, too, about a man who went on trial for killing his ex-girlfriend's cat. Perhaps you heard about that. The guy's an ex-major league baseball, or actually minor league baseball player. Six foot three, 205 pounds. And he was at his girlfriend's place, and apparently the cat bit him and made him mad enough to, to beat the cat basically to death knocked the cat's teeth out of its mouth, messed up its lungs, broke its ribs, split its tongue. What an absolute act of barbarity. What a, what a mean, vicious thing to do. You know, the Bible is very interesting how it, it, it touches on certain things. And you might find this interesting in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 10. The writer said, a righteous man regards the life of his animal. And so for us to see somebody treat a small animal like that, it's unbelievable. Six foot three, 205 pounds, he kicked the cat in the face, knocked its teeth out, split its tongue, tongue threw it against the wall, busted up its ribs. He was tried for animal cruelty. And a lot of, a lot of Americans, when they heard this, uh, this, uh, this news were outraged. And I bet you a, a good portion of us in this room think that that was just an... We ought to all think that was just an absolutely terrible thing to do. It is a terrible thing to do. To harm an animal. Small animal. Helpless little thing. This guy weighs 205 pounds. The cat weighed 7 1⁄2 pounds. I mean, it's just an absolutely cruel thing to do. And, and, and say a friend of yours approached you and told you that their cat or their dog, their, their beloved pet, whatever it may be, that they, that they found that animal in that condition. Say you had your dog and you love your little dog. You went outside to feed the dog and you find that dog's been kicked to death. You see that, the, that his tongue split open, his teeth are out of his mouth. It, it, it hits your dog. Well, that's a, that, wouldn't you be extremely upset about that? And beyond that, what if one of your friends walked up to you and and they said to you and it wasn't your 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 animal now it's their animal they walk up to you and they say to you my girlfriend or my boyfriend you know took a bat to my dog or my cat or whatever would that outrage you and i want i want a response from you would that outrage you would you would you get upset how many can nod their head yes or how many of you would say no i hate my cat i mean some of you might be right. 